of some delay. Um, actually, this is not a I made a few little changes to the presentation after this, this one, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so I'm going to talk about RSGen. Uh, RSGen I presented last year as a data form generator. And then I went into companies like AB Ambro and Ramo and Virtual Railways. And I tried to, to uh, present uh, the, the RSGen uh, generator. But then I found that the people would not, not really get a good feeling because they had no application, they had no screens, there was only a story. So I had to make an application generator. And the nice thing is, coming here, I think I'm the fifth person presenting something with applications here. But I think that also shows that the Semantic Media Weekly is getting in the next level. You're not only talking anymore about the, the technical thing, but we're now talking, several people are talking about how are we going to make applications available <coughs> in, for general public. So I, I will very shortly talk about the objective, uh, the realization, uh, because the business rule engine is a little bit specific, I will a little bit into that, and I think I will not have time to talk about the data collection rate. So 60%, uh, it says, of all IT is very small applications made by people in Excel or in Access, and these people are really struggling with the physical data modeling and all that. So I think that uh, an application generator, but for all those simple applications, could really have a, 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 a use in also in corporate and organizational IT. Basically, this is what it is. I define the application in Excel. Uh, people know how to work with Excel, it's easy to edit. Uh, I generate an XML file from the uh, Excel. Uh, that XML file is being rendered as wiki text. I make properties, templates, forms, uh, report, I make a standard report. Uh, I, I can make a switchboard for all the screens so you can go there. And groovy templates are very important. So it goes in Excel, comes out wiki text. Uh, at this moment, it is not a web service, but I intend to operate it as a web service so that people can send it in Excel, give the bot access to the wiki, and then the application will be generated in that wiki. Um, so what can I do with this? I can create an application in a dedicated namespace. Uh, it, I can convert, uh, there's a, a piece of code that converts HTML maps to Wikitext maps. There's a unique number generator that uh, is not really uh, finished yet, but the intention is that it also takes care that all numbers are really being used, that are being issued. Because, for instance, for invoices, uh, you cannot have some numbers that are uh, lacking. You really have to uh, issue all numbers. Um, as I said, uh, I use Groovy templating, and when I start out, all the things are made with a generic template, but for every form, you can also uh, point to a specific template. So when the application becomes more and more mature, I find that for some forms, I make specific templates, and then I use that to generate a page. Um, I think this approach uh, has the um, we call it standage, that you save it outside of the wiki, and it's, it's very easy to see. Uh, you can do version control, obviously the wiki is also a version control, but you take the whole Excel sheet and, and you can look at it. And you can very easily reuse parts of the Excel sheet. It's like copy paste and then the parts of the application again. And I think Excel is an organizational environment. It's the most used uh, tool that you could do it in. So how did I do it? I use uh, Java, but basically I always write Groovy Java. Um, talk to the Media Wiki API. Uh, I, I started out with using the Java, uh, Java Wikibot framework, but it was not updated anymore, so I wrote my own Eclipse. Uh, at this moment it runs in Eclipse, but as I said, it could be a web service. And I talked about the templates, and I'm not looking at it. Make a say what I call cascading templates so that I can more, be more specific but use a generic one. 
and I'd like to go just a little bit into the rules. But first let me show you. There are actually two pages. On one page I define all the properties with uh, a data type and some security settings on it and, and possibly uh, the values that are allowed and uh, do not overwrite. If I generate pages, certain pages I can mark do not overwrite at this moment and this is actually just to keep the uh, properties good. And here, this is what I use to uh, give them an order if I want to in the screen. So you have the name, the type, allowed values. So this is what I do here. And then the application is defined. So the top is only for knowing what you want to do. And on the first row, I just put what kind of control I want. And here are all the properties. So far, I've implemented this. If you define a semantic object, it will ge uh, generate the, the, uh, the template and the form and the uh, categories and whatever you need. Um, it will make a report, a standard report. That, that's a standard query, but you can use it copy-paste for other things. Uh, you can say it will be like on the switch uh, page. Um, and obviously, you've got standard input and your standard field. And then I've defined the semantic form, which does not generate uh, a template, but makes more uh, complex forms. So see, like well, this one knows uh, four templates start and end, show, select, field, control, uh, hidden. Uh, I've got this image map, and I can just now make um, actually every week there's one or two tags coming to it. Um, actually, this is. The application. Now, this is the reason to use a spreadsheet and not set a mini graph. Um, the, the application is heavily configured. Uh, almost everything it does is configurable by an XML file, so you can really make sure. Uh, yeah. As I said, it's also cascading configurations, and it has a lot of sensible defaults, so you can. Uh, Define on, on the highest level, and then you can decide that on some some uh, objects you only want to have uh, different uh, settings, and the configuration can be can be reused. So what I'd like to point to is the uh, business rule engine that I've connected to the Semantic Media Wiki, which is totally different, obviously, from from our our notice rules because it's it's, it's really different uh, and. Um, it, it talks to the uh, triple store, so it takes the data from the triple store, the D-Rules engine. It's, it's a GBoss open source project. And uh, it writes the wiki pages, it creates wiki pages or changes data on wiki pages. But it can also open a page. Um, at this moment it works statically, so I can now run a batch. And I want to make it into an event driven thing. And I've just applied uh, for a grant for the uh, Dutch government which means that I don't have to pay income tax while I'm working on this. And most probably I will get that. And so then I can put a little more effort in it. Uh, and I think if, if this is real-time connected to the wiki, I can use it for workflow. Uh, you can then decide based on, on a set of values on the page, which page you go, is it, is it filled in or right, or all kinds of things. Uh, and, and I think a very important part of the D rules environment is the governor because that's a web-based rule management system, but it's also a rule server. It's a web service. Uh, you can either get a set of rules from it and run it locally, or you can just give the data and get a result there. Interestingly, is you can use the guided rules editor in the web interface. Uh, but to me also it's interesting, you can do a lot with uh, Excel again and make decision tables that are being uh, executed. You can make a domain specific language, this is for, for business type uh, organizations, very interesting. And obviously you can use the internal languages. And if, if something very specific has to be done, you can always add a little groovy code to it. So I think this is a very important uh, uh, part of applying the business rules because now you have the business rules in a central place in the organization 
And all kinds of applications can relate to it, not only the video. So I'll talk three minutes about this. This is what I also showed a year ago. This is a standard uh, business intelligence stack with the data warehouse, uh, data marts, and, and outflow tools. And what we do is, uh, that's, that's already for a year ready now, I take the source, generate pages of all the objects, like the tables and the columns and the keys and whatever, and I put all data I can find on the source in there. And then I generate the ETL code to load the data flow. And what I don't do yet, but I intend to do is also generate the codes for creating uh, all of tubes. But probably more interesting here is the structure. What we did is uh, we had two namespaces. And in the one namespace with all the data, so on the, on the data pages, and the data pages are rendered through the template in the user pages. So the, uh, uh, <coughs> I found that IT people are very uh, afraid of users uh, uh, mixing up the data or changing things. And in this way, people can add to the data but cannot change the, the basic data because it's in a different namespace. And then you see the workflow. First, I load the data. Then I ask people to put information on, on certain fields or the tables. Uh, and this is like an iterative process. Uh, uh, you add rules. For instance, uh, the, the naming convention in a certain database always gives a, a, a lot of information. So you could just change the rules. And then in the end, it generates the data pages that define the data warehouse. And from there, I generate the ETL code again. Three. What does the DDL and statistic mean on the left side? Uh, I take the data definition language. We'll also uh, uh, take the data into the staging area. And I look into the data and try to find as much statistics like uh, what's the mean, what's the max, what's the mean, uh, all these kind of things. So they give a clue to, the clue to the people, but also to the rule engine, which uh, fields are important or not. If you've got, for instance, a sub uh, environment, you've got thousands of tables. And there's a lot of tables that you can't do anything with. And to a great extent, the rule engine can now say, OK, you don't have to put effort in those, and can uh, focus my attention on the tables and the fields that are important. But still, it's a manual process of creating this statistic. No, no. I mean, to, to trigger it, at least. Or is, is it's, it's batch driven, yes. Yeah. What initiates a batch? <laughs> you or the user? Well, the, the, the user could do as well. So there's an interface way for them to launch this. The, this, this uh, the interface at this moment is the, the uh, Eclipse environment. We just start a batch. But that, that could be easily started in other ways as well. So at that moment, you create a bunch of pages that describe the whole source database. That's what I use it for. So it's a one-time event. So if, if there's a new area within the organization you want to pull into the data warehouse, then you just query that part. Well, okay, it's the same. But now you see the text I use, and I think, wow. I think this is something I'm really looking into. I have not had enough time this year because of, of family circumstances. But uh, I'm really looking into using Lima and, and RapidMinder to, to also get into the text to make it as automatic as possible so that the business users can, can add data without even really thinking about tagging or something. Having to tag it. So this is what it looks like. So you've got your schema and the tables in the schema and, and columns. And this is what it, this is all the data that it's that's based on. So this is the data I write on the page, and this is what's on the user page. So I, I, the one thing that's good about it is I can change that data every time. Even when the data is already in, I can change how it's rendered, and the user can look. Uh, do much damage to this little piece of So what I use, uh, obviously, is the Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, the application really runs on, on a triple store, actually talks to the triple store. 
And, and I use the Tomcat uh, or another Java application server to render a DRUs manager. And I use ETL, Clover ETL. This also runs in the Tomcat. Um, this is the stack, the software I use. Maybe it's not much to, it's not, uh, what do you call it? Surprising. <laughs> What are you using the new toolkit for? Uh, I've been looking at uh, when, when people do not want to uh, build the ontology or want to have a more formal way of, of looking into the ontology. I've been looking into the new toolkit and ProtoJ to do that. Uh, and basically, I think ProtoJ is rather hard to understand. And, and I like the fact that it's also, from me on, I also like it that it's a clip based I have to think in one environment. So my conclusion, uh, I think uh, Semantic Media Wiki is actually a great platform for building applications. And one of the reasons for that is the underlying RDF data model. Uh, uh, the triple store, which has the data, contains the data, is open to all kinds of other applications. Uh, there's a lot of functionality out of the box, versioning, web service, etc., a lot of extensions, and, and you can easily extend it yourself. Um, this wish list is changed during the days, obviously. So this is the slide that some things have been taken off because uh, it's been promised already, and uh, next month we will see it, so I'm going to read it out. However, probably it's interesting. I would, would very much like to have a CSS ID tag, not only a class, but an ID as well, so that I can give the, the specific controls an ID, and then the CSS can put them on the place. That, that would be nice. Now, the internal objects, well, we have been talking about that a little bit uh, in the past day. Um, I would very much like to see their efficiency in the trick store, see the history of the data. So now we only have the current data in the trick store. That, that would, I think, need internal objects, most probably, but that would really help for people if you could look back through the query mechanism, not only through the uh, versioning of the wiki itself, but that I could also get versions from the triple store, from how was the data before. Obviously, we'd like to have support for more triple stores. Now, from my lightning talk, you have probably taken that I tried to, to make it happen. Uh, I like what I call dynamic support for triple stores, which if you write data to the triple store, it will be rendered in the wiki. That would also be a very nice thing, I think. But probably not that easy to implement, I don't know. So the other way around, not only from the wiki to the triple store. Oh, well, that's basically what we call Sparkle in to some extent, that uh, with a bit more mapping, uh, I mean, the challenge there is you have to know how to display the data. If you want to use a standard output format like ours, yeah. you, you want to show something to the user and not just a string of the URL no. normally. I mean, yeah. And this is a bit of a, but I think it's not so far away, actually. Okay. Good. Oh, and this is this would be very nice, but I think I'm the only one to think this. Is. Uh, oh. No, you know, the other that this last thing said. Thank you, questions. And, uh, so, do you have any? Is there anybody that has any questions on, on this uh, project? Okay. Um, oh, thanks. It's a nice idea. One question is that uh, my user used the generator to generate the application. Do they need to understand the the, the data, RDF data that they use? The data. Yeah. Uh, no, but you, you always have to understand the, the logical data model, but you do not have to understand the physical data model. Okay. But you have to have some idea what you're doing. But beyond that, you don't have to think. <laughs> so you still need to understand the logical data model. Yeah. If you if you if you've got an idea what you how your object, what your objects look like. Mm -hmm. Basically, if, if I go through the, the Excel sheet, first oh, I define that's, that's the objects, okay. and then I define the specific forms that use these objects and sometimes more templates on one form. But first I just define the objects. Okay. Uh, this is definitely a uh, great, you know, I, 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 sorry, I need something. Can I go back to the Excel uh, uh, example? Are you really using Excel for you to uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, or, or open office, which is the same. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Well, I use the XML XMS for I heard something like that, but I guess my my eyes were open. My mind was probably seen. I didn't really get the photo part. Ah, here I am. That's my story. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I'll show you later. Yeah. <laughs> 